Welcome to the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast, where being a badass has less to do with what you wear and what music you listen to and everything to do with whether you've got the thriving online business of your dreams. I'm your renegade thinking Harvard Law grad turned online entrepreneur host, Bobby Clay. In my years building my thriving business, the most important lesson I've learned is that being a badass online marketer isn't about secret strategies or ninja tactics. It's about doing the basic stuff right and showing the F up. So each week here on the show, you'll get clear, easy to execute guidance on how to build your online business and a swift kick in the ass or two to make sure you're getting it done. Hey there, welcome to this Friday live edition of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Klink, and I'm excited for today's show because we're gonna be talking about something that I I think like it's it's rooted in, in a problem that a lot of entrepreneurs face, but I think it's really bad advice that we've all heard. And I wanna kind of break down where it's advice that we should kind of take apart and not be applying and instead what we should be doing instead. Specifically, we're going to be talking about this concept that we hear a lot about how we should put blinders on and we shouldn't pay attention at all to what our competitors are doing. And I'm going to talk about why I believe that's actually quite bad advice and why you should be paying attention to what your competition is doing, but what you need to do as part of that process. So that's what we're talking about in today's live episode. But before I dive into that, um, uh, there is still time to grab your ticket for my live event, Badass Online Marketing Live. It's happening the, the first weekend of December. It's a three-day virtual event where we're going to be diving into how to build an online business the right way. And we're going to talk about kind of things broader than just like the traditional things we are taught about conversion and selling and all that, but instead how to build a real business that'll be around for the long term. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. You'll be learning from me, but also some amazing guest speakers, including James Wedmore, uh, Mel Abraham, uh, Anna Nelson, who's my Gallup Strengths Coach, and also Arfan Hussein, who runs my Facebook ads. So that's the lineup. You can get more info by heading to bobbyclink.com forward slash bomb live. That's B-O-M live, bobbyclink.com forward slash bomb live. Now with that, let's dive into today's episode. And the notion that we all hear about how we should be putting on blinders and not paying attention to what our competitors are doing. And this got me thinking, and I got to be honest, I did this for a long time. I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I don't want to, I don't want to get, you know, roped in and all that. But (laughs) as I tend to do, I started asking myself questions and the questions were, what if we heard that advice and other businesses and and traditional businesses were listening to that advice? And I asked myself this question, what would we think if Ford literally didn't pay attention to what Chevy was doing? We would think that was insane. Or what would we think if Samsung didn't pay attention to Apple? Again, we would think that was insane because we know that people have to do that. And so I said, okay, then what is it? What's at the root of this issue? And is there a reason why we are somehow different and should actually ignore kind of the traditional wisdom in the marketing world that of course you do competitor research. Of course, that's just part of your market research. And when I thought about it, I couldn't come up with a reason, but I get where the advice is coming from. The advice is coming from the fact that too many online entrepreneurs, when they do look at what their competitors are doing and and their competitors' businesses, they end up doing what we call compare and despair. In other words, they look at their competitors, see that their competitors are succeeding, and that makes them feel bad. And so then they get sad because of this comparisonitis. That is what we should actually be focusing on. Instead of saying, don't compare, what we need to do is detach comparison, 
or, or sorry, detach the looking at what our competitors are doing from the compare and despair mentality. And I want to talk about this for, for a few reasons. First of all, I want to tell you that finding that there are competitors who are doing the same thing as you and succeeding should actually have the opposite effect. It should not lead you to despair if you're not successful yet. Candidly, I'll tell you back in 2017, when I was struggling to build my online business, when it wasn't working, when I had my disastrous launch where I lost $25,000, but really that year I probably spent 50 grand total and, and I couldn't make it work. One of the things that actually kept me going was that I knew that there were other online lawyers who were selling training and templates to the people that I wanted to sell to. And so I looked at that and I said, okay, this tells me that there is a market here. It tells me there is hope. It tells me that I simply need to crack the code and figure out what it is that I'm not getting that they are. So that's the first thing I want you to think about. If you are struggling and you look and see other people are succeeding, it actually should be a good thing because it should give you hope that there is a market, there is demand for what you wanna be doing. You simply have to figure out how to speak into that demand in a way that will be effective. So that's kind of the first piece where I wanna to try to, to get rid of this dis, uh, compare and despair. But just as importantly, I want you to understand this, you should be seeing what your competitors are doing, and doing not to copy them, because I'm not suggesting that you go and copy anyone else. But you should know what other people are doing. For example, I want to know what are the other people teaching email marketing doing? Are they selling? What is their price point? And just have these ideas of what the market is. It's not because I'm going to go and, and try to emulate them and try to be like them or even necessarily try to compare to them in marketing. Now, I might but I won't always. The point simply is for me to know and see what's happening in the market. How are people competing? Now, in the email marketing, I think hopefully you've heard me talk about this a lot. Like I am very specifically carving out a very different space because there is someone who I see or multiple people I see who what they offer as a freebie are templates. And if you've listened to me talk about this for very much, I tell you that templates are in fact counterproductive for your email marketing because it actually prevents you from connecting with your audience in a real way. Now that's a stand I'm taking, that's what I believe, and I'm willing to die on that hill. So I'm willing to do that. But here's the important thing. Me seeing that multiple people are offering that tells me that's what a lot of people are asking for. So it lets me figure out how do I view things differently in a way to actually speak into what the market says. To explain the point that templates are not the way to go, that you can look at swipe, you can look at examples, but ultimately you have to take ownership of creating your own emails, of creating your own stories. And again, that's not gonna convince everyone, but it allows me to speak into what they're thinking about. And some people will say, ah, I like what this Bobby guy has to say. And so it is a way to do that. It's a way for me to kind of see what's happening in the market and speak and bust those beliefs. Now, if I put blinders on and ignored what everyone else teaching email marketing was teaching, offering as lead magnets, et cetera, I wouldn't know that. I'd be speaking just randomly to a vacuum. And again, I've, I've told this story many times and it, it's not exactly competitors, but if you have competitors who have podcasts and all those things, listening to that can be incredibly valuable, especially the successful people, because you'll figure out what is it that they figured out? What is it in their messaging? And again, I am not saying you copy their messaging because you shouldn't do that. Your messaging should be unique to you. But actually understanding the themes, because they probably figured out the objections, the hurdles, the things that are stopping people from taking action. And so listening to those podcasts, reading the blogs, reading their social content will help you to understand that. And 
the, the thing I want you to get is that ultimately the problem is that we have to shift our mindsets. This notion of compare and despair, that's not automatic. That's not the automatic result of knowing what other people are doing. You choose those thoughts. You choose subconsciously most likely, but it is your mind creating stories based upon facts. The fact that someone who is doing the same thing as you and being successful does not have to lead you to be in a place where you're saying, oh, I'm a failure. What you need to do is work on that mindset piece. You need to figure out what is it that leads to that and how do you coach yourself out of that particular conclusion, that particular story that you're building in your mind. Now, again, you could do things like I talk about Byron Katie's The Work, which has been very successful to me. It's, it's four questions. Is it true? Can I be sure it's true? Uh, and then you ask these other questions that, is it serving me? And, and what would be possible if I didn't have these beliefs? And so again, you can do that. But similarly, you could you know do other things. There's obviously people like the Life Coaching School and, and Brooke Castillo who has a way to help people do these things. There's a lot of people who have this and you've got to figure out what works for you. But I'm simply going to tell you, you're not going to succeed as an entrepreneur by simply ignoring everything that your competitors are doing or getting upset if they're succeeding or getting upset if they're teaching something different than you or being mad if they're challenging something that you believe because we have to do that. That's what marketing is. There's a classic case where, where Samsung, their phone actually had this advertisement that it was like making fun of Apple and the iPhone release because it was like, um, I don't know the, I don't remember the exact details, but it was essentially like, you know, someone who had a Samsung phone asking someone who was in line for the kind of newest release of an iPhone. Well, what are you, why are you here? What are you so excited about? And they talked about all these things. Oh, well, this new phone has X, Y, and Z. And then Samsung lists that they already had all that stuff and more. That's what's going to happen to you in marketing. You're going to have people who are going to look at you and going to look at your competitors and they're going to decide what they want. And if looking at your competitors is somehow going to lead you to this compare and despair, that's something you've got to deal with at the mindset level. Because to be successful, you need to have a pulse on the market. You need to know what the demand is out there. You need to know what, what your competitors are doing. And you need to understand all of that so you can kind of sense and react what's happening out there in your market. So no, you can't simply ignore your competition to put blinders on. Now you don't copy them. You don't simply try to be, you know, you know, version 2.0 of someone else, but you know what they're doing. You keep tabs on the market and then you, you do the heavy work in your mind of not letting that get you down. So my call to action to you today is very simple. Uh, don't, don't buy into this notion that you should put blinders on and ignore your competition because that is not a path to success. Uh, if you, by looking at your, your competitors, you somehow get compare and despair, you need to deal with that mindset work. That's what you need to do, not simply ignoring it. Because it's kind of like if you're sick, ignoring it doesn't make it better. The same thing here, ignoring your competition doesn't make your competition go away. You need to treat the actual um, ailment here, which is a mindset issue. So uh, keep tabs on your competition, but do the deep work to avoid getting upset and despairing over their success. That's it for this week. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you again next week. That's it for this episode of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. Make sure to tune in next time. And in the meantime, go out and build the badass business of your dreams.